Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Aline Yon. I'm an alum alumni from the Ontario College of Traditional Chinese Medicine and um, a registered acupuncturist. And today I will present you the earth season in traditional Chinese medicine. Apologies again that I can't share my video for some reason. My computer doesn't allow me tonight. Um, so please bear with me. Um, Okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry, it looks like my computer is not happy tonight. Bear with me, please. Thank you. We've, uh, thank you for bearing with me. First, let's start with gratitude. First, I would like to do a land acknowledgement. I would like to acknowledge that the land we're meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Adenozani, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. I would like also to acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. I would like to thank the Ontario College of Traditional Chinese Medicine for co-hosting um, this meeting and the Toronto Integrative Medicine Centre, which is the professional clinic uh, of the Ontario College of Traditional Chinese Medicine for co-hosting this meeting. And I would also like to thank you for taking the time tonight um, to attend that webinar and learn more about traditional Chinese medicine and how to take care of yourself. Disclaimer, this webinar is for educational purposes only. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Please always seek the advice of your health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Please never disregard any professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have learned on this webinar. Let's introduce each other. Who am I? My name is Aline Yon. I was born in, and I was educated in France. I'm of Chinese and Cambodian descent, and I immigrated to Canada five years ago. I hold a bachelor's degree of life science from the universities of Paris in France. And then afterwards, I went to earn my master's degree in biotechnology management again in Paris in France and afterwards after graduation I worked for 10 years in the pharmaceutical industry and after 10 years I decided to change career and I went back to school at the Ontario College of Traditional Chinese Medicine where I earned my acupuncture diploma. I'm now a registered acupuncturist practicing traditional Chinese medicine um, with the College of uh, Traditional Chinese Medicine Practitioners and Acupuncturists of Ontario. What is traditional? Yes, Yolanda? Um, please unmute yourself if you wish to talk. Oh, whatever. What is traditional Chinese medicine? So TCM has a very different perspective on health. When you look at the picture on the left hand side of the screen, some of you can see, what do you see? Some of you can see either a rabbit. Here you would have the head of the rabbit. Here you have the eye of the rabbit. And here you have the ears of the rabbit. Some of you won't see a rabbit, but they will see a duck. 
So here you still have the head of the duck, you still have the eye of the duck, but here instead of the ears of the rabbit, you would see the beak of the duck. Does that mean that people who saw the rabbit are wrong? No. Does that mean that the people who saw uh, the duck are wrong? No. Both people who either saw a rabbit or a duck or even anything else are right. It just, because you're all looking at the same picture, it just depends on what perspective you are uh, choosing or you are taking to look at that picture. And same from the right hand side here with uh, the glass. Some people would see the, this glass of water half full, other people would see it half empty. Both of you are right. It just depends on the perspective you're looking at it. And it's the same with traditional Chinese medicine and Western biomedicine. So how would traditional Chinese medicine look at a body? And how would biomedicine, Western biomedicine look at the body? First, on the left-hand side, if we look at a human body from a biomedicine perspective, we can say that it's descriptive. On this um, famous drawing from Leonardo da Vinci, you can see that everything is in proportion. He drew the head, the limbs, the torso, and the legs, and everything are in proportion, like in real life. It's very descriptive. Biomedicine is very descriptive. We look at things exactly of how um, they see it. Sorry for the noise. Um, and whereas in traditional Chinese medicine, it's more conceptual. Believe it or not, this painting is um, actually a representation of the human body. So here, for instance, this river going up, it's the spine of the human body. And the ocean, the water here, they would call it the kidney meridian because the function of the kidney is the life uh, is giving life because water is at the source of life. So water would represent the kidney meridian and the kidneys and also um, the urinary function of the body. Here you can see a man working on his field. So that would be the earth meridians and that would be the digestive system and thinking and working. Here you would see the forest that would be the liver and gallbladder meridian. And um, you can't see it here, but at the top you would um, have some fire and that would be like the heart meridian. So that's how traditional Chinese medicine look at the human body. They are not that interested in, des in describing the human body exactly as it is. They use concept to describe how the body functions. And when you look at those symptoms, for instance, fatigue, low appetite, digestion issues, food sensitivities, and worry, how would both biomedicine and traditional Chinese medicine would look at those symptoms? So for biomedicines, for instance, in biomedicine, because it's very descriptive, they would cut and look at the symptoms one by one. And you can look at the way biomedicine is really into cutting things and separating things because they put a good, uh, strong emphasis on anatomy and anatomy from the Greek ana, which means out of, and tomos, which means cut. So you already have cutting in it. And microscope is looking at different levels, smaller and smaller. So it's really separating one by one. So when they look at those symptoms in biomedicine, what would they say? What Western medicine would say? For instance, oh, if you have fatigue, they'd say, oh, maybe you have issues with the endocrine system. So they might send you to the endocrine endocrinologist. You have low appetite, digestion issues, and food sensitivities. They said, oh, it's an issue with the digestive system. So they would send you to uh, the gastroenterologist Anemia, they said, oh, well, we need blood tests. So they would send you to get blood tests and they might look at your endocrine systems. Uh, loose tool, they say, oh, digestive system. Okay, then they would send you to the gastroenterologist. And if you worry, they said, oh, you worry too much, must be something with psychology. So they would send you to a psychologist. 
So from the point of view of Western biomedicine, when you have all the symptoms, they would send you to ver like several different specialists to treat you. How would traditional Chinese medicine look at those symptoms? They don't cut and separate all the symptoms one by one, but they would integrate, integrate all the symptoms and they would say, oh, we know that pattern. So when you have all those symptoms, it's called splinchy deficiency. And you would only see one practitioner, the practitioner of traditional Chinese medicine or an acupuncturist. And uh, with the treatment, they would treat all the symptoms at the same time. Contrary to what people might say and might think, traditional Chinese medicine works. And there were a lot of research uh, being done on traditional Chinese medicine and lots of research papers published, both in East Asia, China, um, Japan, Korea, but also in the more Western world. And it has been proven that acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine works in fertility, pregnancy, constipation, and any digestive issues you would have. It would help with pain. It would help with relieving you with um, cancer, um, the side effects, for instance, of uh, chemotherapy. And it would also help you with depression and insomnia. Some of you might ask, for instance, does Chinese medicine work for this or that disease? Um, the answer is usually yes, it works because traditional Chinese medicine is a whole system uh, in itself. It can be used either as a standalone um, therapy. So either you're sick and you just go to traditional Chinese medicine, but it could also work uh, in conjunction together with um, Western biomedicine. Traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, is more than 2,200 years old. Why do I say that? For Chinese speaking people, please excuse my uh, pronunciation. I know it's really poor. Huang Din Aging is the Yellow Empress classic of uh, medicine. It's a book that was written more than 2,200 years old ago. And that book summarizes theories and techniques used in traditional Chinese medicine. So it means that if it has a book that summarizes all those techniques, it means that the medicines is even older. Some sources say that TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, is even 3,000 years old. On the contrary, when was biomedicine born? Some sources say, some scholars say that it was born in the 19th century with microbiology and um, search, um, doctors such as Claude Bernard and Pasteur. So how does traditional Chinese medicine look at late summer and the earth season? Some of you are familiar with uh, the yin and yang theory in Chinese medicine. They say that you can't have night if you don't have day. Uh, you can't have the sun um, if the moon is not there and so on. Some of you might also be um, aware of the five element theory, which is the other um, foundational theory in traditional Chinese medicine. So for those who don't know, here's um, a quick explanation. And for others, it would be revisions. So in the five element theory, first you start with water. So as I said earlier, water is at the source of all life. And we say that water generates wood because you need water for wood for plants to grow. And then when the wood is burned, you need wood to create fire. That's why they say wood generates fire. And then when the fire burns, it becomes ashes and the ashes is earth. So that's why we say fire generates earth. And then in the earth, we can find ores of metal. So um, that's why we say earth generates metal and metal can melt and when it melts it becomes very liquid or other people would say that tiny 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 metals is actually ions and when you put certain ions together it becomes water that's why they say metal would generate 
water. And for life to be created and for life to stay, we need those five elements um, to, you need that circle of life. We need all those five elements. We need water that would generate wood, that would generate fire, that would generate earth, that would generate metal, that would generate fire. And the cycle of life would go on and on and on. And you would also go at the overcoming interaction. For instance, they would say that water control fire because when you put water on over fire, water would extinguish fire. And they say fire would control metal because when you put fire and metal together, fire would melt the metal. Metal would control wood because if you have a metal ax, the ax would cut the wood. And then if the wood is really cut in small pieces, there's no wood anymore. That's why we say that metal control wood. And in the end, in this cycle here, and that's something very important that you will remember tonight, wood controls earth. Why? Because when you have a landing slide, for instance, um, you would plant small trees so the land would stop sliding. That's why we say wood would control earth. I hope this is clear with everybody. If it's not, don't worry. It doesn't prevent you from getting the tips and applying them in your life um, for tonight's webinar. And this on the left hand side, you see the five elements in a big circle like that. But in other theories in traditional Chinese medicine, they would also look at the five elements put in this way. In this case, you have fire here at the top, you have the water at the bottom, which is fire south, we say, water in the north, um, the east would have wood, and um, the west you would have metal, and in the center here, you have, um, you have earth. Um, which means before um, the wood would generate fire, it has to go to earth and, and so on. Before fire goes to metal, it has to go to earth. Before metal goes to water, it has to go um, to earth. And this one would be more like the four seasons that we know. For instance, the fire season would be the summer after the summer, you have the autumn. So autumn is the metal season. After the, the autumn, you have winter. Winter is the water season. And after winter, you have spring and spring is the wood season. And they say between each season, you have transitions with the earth season, which is in the middle. That's why in traditional Chinese medicine, we say we have five seasons and, oh, and the fifth one is the that goes and transition and transform between each season. So the earth season would be either between each season, but it would also be delayed some in traditional Chinese medicine. And according to the classic of the Yellow Emperor in traditional Chinese medicine, um, they say that late summer is the hinge between hot and cold season, uniting the yin and the yang. This transitional period would mainly affect the spleen, causing internal cold with diarrhea. Point in the mid-back can be used. And back to the seasons. Where, when are the seasons in traditional Chinese medicine? We don't look at um, the same calendar as in the Western world. For instance, spring in the Chinese calendar starts with traditional with um, Chinese New Year. So this would say that spring, for instance, this year started on February the 3rd. Summer started on May the 5th. Autumn, technically we actually now in autumn because it started uh, last uh, 7th of August and winter will start on the 7th of November. When you compare it to the Western calendar, they say spring starts start the 20th of March and actually the 20th of March is the spring and equinox. So for the Chinese calendar, it's already the middle of spring. And same for summer. Summer is the summer solstice. So for the Chinese calendar, it's already the middle of the summer. 
autumn same 23rd of September it's already the mid on the middle of uh, the autumn and winter winter solstice is already the middle of the winter what you have to remember is when we follow this calendar around each change of seasons around the 3rd of February the 5th of May the 7th of August and the 7th of November between each change of seasons you would have the earth season the fifth season and how is the fifth season in traditional Chinese medicine? How is the earth season? And what are we supposed to do um, with the, during the earth season? So according to the Aaron Press Classic of Medicine, they said that the earth season is in the center. And in the center, we find dampness and humidity, which can nourish and lubricate the soil, preparing it to produce strong earth. Now we're talking about late summer. During the season between summer and autumn, late summer, the fruits ripen and turn yellow. When they ripen, they taste sweet and can nourish spleen chi. The spleen chi is then able to nourish the muscles and flesh. From the sap of flesh and muscle, lungs are generated. These correspond to the metal element. And maybe some of you noticed that right now, it's the season for eating corn, which is yellow. Um, it's a yellow uh, produce or apricots and all those yellow produce. And we need to nourish our spleen. Right now is the time to eat corn and apricots and so on to prepare our body to the autumn. So how is the earth in traditional Chinese medicine? First, we say it's at the center here of the other elements. During the earth season is a season of humidity and dampness. I would invite you that at each season, change of season, according to the Chinese solar calendar, maybe some of you would notice that it's humid and damp, just like the past few days in Toronto. The weather was very humid. Uh, it was difficult to breathe. And, and also between the change of seasons, for instance, between, um, I know, for instance, uh, between the autumn, like early November, between the autumn and the winter, for instance, it starts to snow because it's dampness, it's humidity. Uh, just before around Chinese New Year, usually would um, some, some of you would notice it starts to rain. So you would notice some dampness at the change of seasons and that would be the earth season. For late summer, um, we also have a very damp um, season here. Color is yellow. Uh, that is important because we would look at the yellow color when we would look at the food we would need to eat uh, during the earth season. The earth season would affect the stomach and the spleen meridians, which is digestive system. Um, so we'll talk about it later. The earth um, element, the traditional Chinese medicine, uh, affect the flesh and the muscles. Sorry, there's a typo here. And we will look at it later. And also what I forgot to put here is the earth season uh, affects um, thinking, pensiveness. And people who are earth people, they usually have a singing voice. So how do we have an harmonious, harmonious earth season with traditional Chinese medicine. How can we keep ourselves in good health during the earth season? First, we have to get up early and go to bed with the sun. And that's the same for every season if you have followed my last webinars. During the earth season, we need to eat the appropriate earth food. So I will explain further later. We need to ground ourselves to make sure that we don't get agitated too much. We need mild exercise to still get our chi, our energy moving. Something maybe new for you, it's a good idea to get a hug or get a massage. During the earth season, and by earth, we also think of mother earth, nourishing earth. We need to nurture yourself. I would uh, give you some ways of how you could nurture yourself. Take care of your home because mother earth Earth is also home, it's also family, and it's also the time to nurture others. So get up and go to sleep with the sun. So rise. Um, so why we have to get up with the sun and why we have to go to the sleep with the sun? Because according to traditional Chinese medicine, we, um, we need to live in accordance to in harmony with the season. And when we live in harmony with the season, that's when we will be in good health. And 
maybe some of you would notice we have to go to bed with the sun and even if it's late summer and the sun goes to bed later usually by 10 or 11 pm we need to go to sleep why do we need to go to sleep by 10 11 pm because it's the gallbladder and liver meridians and those meridians are very important with regenerations hormones for instance and decision making so if some of you have difficulty making decisions or have hormonal issues or fertility issues and so on. I would really invite you to go to bed by 10 or 11 p.m. latest and see what happens after a month. So why do we have to go to bed by uh, 11 uh, p.m.? For instance, here we have a 24 hour clock. So according to traditional Chinese medicine, every two hours, it's the time of a fame of a certain meridian. And the meridian of gallbladder and liver are the one responsible uh, for cellular repair and detox and rest and recovery. So you need to be asleep during that time. So during the day, you would be able to make good decisions. And also during that time, because your body would have repaired itself and recovered and detox, it's by being asleep during that time and not digesting, that's why it's important not to eat too late. Um, that's when your body regenerates the most. And even in biomedicine, they said that if you want your body to regenerate the most, you, you should be asleep by midnight. And here you can look at different elements so you have wood, metal, earth, fire, water, and fire twice. But the element would be looking at today would be uh, the earth meridian. So you can think, you can see that the earth meridians, stomach and spleen meridians, which are responsible for digesting food, good concentration, concentration, and clear thinking, they are uh, active between seven and 11 a.m., which means ideally you would get up in the morning at seven, you would go for a walk and then come back and have breakfast. And then because you would have clear thinking between nine and 11, that's when you would start to work and think and study. So during the earth season, we need to take care of earth meridians. So it's important to eat breakfast in the morning, as I said earlier, seven to nine a.m and eat the appropriate earth food. So what would be the appropriate earth food? So the appropriate food in any season, first it would be whole grains. Right now we have a lot of corn, so it's time to eat corn. And when you eat corn, um, I would invite you to actually get whole corns like that. So you would eat the corn grains, but I would also invite you to keep the hair of the corn here, rinse them, and then boil them and the tea that you would drink from those corn hair would um, help you with dampness, which is um, another condition that is not good for the earth meridian. Uh, I saw there's a comment. Uh, if it's fine with you, I will answer to the questions uh, at the end of Appropriate food would also means eating seasonal produce. So what you see, what is in season is the right food um, for you right now. So during the earth season, so which is now late summer, but also at uh, the transitions between uh, seasons, what do we have to eat? It's a good idea to eat mildly sweet. And I say mildly sweet, which means um, food that would have a sweet flavor, such as carrot potatoes and sweet potatoes, but not too sweet, which means candy is not an option. Cakes is not a good option. We need to eat yellow food, yellow colored food, because yellow is the color of earth. And by yellow, it's yellow and orange. And round food, because round is um, you know, the shape of harmony of bringing things together. So sweet, Mild, sweet, uh, mildly sweet food would be whole grains, millet rice, sweet rice, uh, corn, chickpea, soybean, chestnut, carrots, potatoes, yams, and sweet potatoes. So you would notice that during the earth season, you also need to eat produce that actually grow inside the earth. So um, roots. 
and round, yellow, Miley sweet food, squash, cabbage, cabbage is round, um, peas, round and mildly sweet, apricots, cantaloupe, and tofu is not a yellow food, but it has a mild sweet flavor and bland flavor. How do you cook the food? For earth season, you have to do very simple preparation, little seasoning and mild taste, bland food, basically. And you have to be moderate in cooking time, not too long, because in the winter, usually we need to cook the food longer. Whereas in the summer, you need to cook very slightly the food. In the earth season, you, it's in the middle. Cooking time is in the middle, not too short, not too long. Methods would be the same. You don't uh, use extreme temperatures um, to cook the food. Fry is not a good idea either. And you would use little water and little oil. In some traditions, when it's um, the transition between seasons, for, for instance, a lot of traditions would have a short fasting. And by short fasting, I mean three days of fasting. And usually when you're entering the cold season, for instance, some traditions would have a fast of single grain. For instance, for three days, you could eat only rice for three days, just to get your earth meridians, the spleen and stomach a little rest. And again, when you're entering into warm season in the spring, for instance, people would have three days of um, just vegetables or fruits. So it would be an idea to do that. I wouldn't recommend fasting to everybody. It really depends on your constitution, but it could be an idea that you could try, but I would also um, encourage you to talk to your healthcare practitioner, maybe it's me or anybody else before you do fasting. For during the earth season, please avoid damp food. Damp food is food that is not good in your body because they weaken your digestive system, your earth meridians. So what do we call damp food in traditional Chinese medicine? Any food that is cold, why? Because whatever you eat and whatever you drink, all the food that you drink and everything, all the food that you eat and everything that you drink the body would bring all that at 37 degrees Celsius, which is your body temperature. So your body will use energy to bring that food at your body temperature before it starts to digest it and absorb it. And during the earth season, the digestive system, which is um, the earth functions, is you know a bit fragile. So it's good to take care of it by not tiring it out. So when you eat warm food, you don't tire out your digestive system, you don't tire out your body. And why not eating raw food? Because cooked food is technically pre-digested. So when you eat cooked food, which means pre-digested food, and then your body would need less energy to actually digest the food, transform the food and absorb the food. Other food that you would need to avoid would be dairy, no ice cream, no cheese, no milk, um, cow's milk, no processed food, no refined sugar, and no alcohol. So during the change of seasons and late summer, like right now, I would really encourage you to eat those damp food in moderation, especially if you're tired or if you have food sensitivities. And again, balance. Those recommendations that I'm giving you, they also depend on your constitution. Because, for instance, um, somebody who is, for instance, always cold, I would tell them, for instance, to eat more warming food, not that much bland, but to put a little bit of spices to warm up the food. Depends on health conditions, um, if you have any disease and so on, your diet should be. Um, should be modified to suit your conditions and also life circumstances. Um, for instance, somebody who is pregnant or somebody who has just given birth wouldn't eat the same type of food. Now, ground yourself. Why do we need to ground yourself? Because it's the earth time and we need to be on the ground and ground ourselves. Um, some of us, um, some of you who attended my summer webinar, 
I was encourage you to go out and to expand yourself and to be creative and so on. But Earth, you have to go back into your middle. You have to go back into your center. You have to go back to yourself, not as much towards the others as much as like in the summer. So ways of grounding yourself would be through meditation, qigong, daiji yoga, or any mindful practice that you would have, writing and so on. Mild exercise too, because um, we also need, you know, even if you need to ground yourself and come back to yourself, you still need to do some mild exercise to just get the energy moving all around your body. And um, also because uh, during, because the earth, um, the earth meridians also governs the flesh and the muscles. So you need to move those muscles. And because if those muscles are not moved enough, if the chi is not moving enough, then you would um, start to worry a lot. So that's why, you know, they say you know, some people who are very anxious, who have anxiety and depression, they say, oh, do exercise because it would move the energy. And in, during the earth season, it's time to move the energy, but not too much. You don't want to disperse yourself too much, just enough to move the energy. Get a massage, a hug. Why do I say get a massage or hug? Because the earth governs the flesh. And what's the best way to take care of the flesh is take care, like touch. So if your earth is in balance when you are during the earth season just right now, it would be a good idea, for instance, to take care of yourself and get a massage and nourish your earth by touch, by getting a massage, by nourishing, with touch, hug is also a good idea. Um, so it could be like hugging people, but also animals or a pillow. Like hug is a good idea to feel hugged, to feel touched. And even a kiss, why? Because um, the earth meridians, they said it opens on the mouth and the lips. We use the mouth to eat, but also the lips to touch. That's why a kiss, um, like this mother kissing uh, her, her child on the cheek would be a good idea too. Nurture yourself. Why nurture yourself? Because earth, you think of earth as the mother earth, the nurturing earth. So how could you nurture yourself? It's a good idea to nurture yourself physically by food, by nourishing yourself with nourishing appropriate food. That's why I put like a porridge um, in Asian traditions, it would be more kanji, but I didn't find a kanji picture you know, on the internet. Nurture yourself physically too by getting massage, but also nurturing yourself intellectually by reading. Because during the earth season, it's also the during earth, earth also uh, commands thinking and reading and studying. So it will also be a good time to nurture yourself inter intellectually by learning new things or reading and also nurture yourself emotionally by being surrounded by people that you like, that nourish your soul, surrounded by your family and friends. Earth is also the house, is also family. So what are your different homes? Homes would be body. Nourish your body, for instance, by touch, putting cream on your, your skin is a good way to also take care of your home, take care of your skin, take care of your body. Eat well, that, do mild exercise to keep your physical home healthy, your body. Take care of your house during the change of seasons. Maybe some of you, for instance, they would clean and tidy the house. You have the spring clean and the autumn spring. Um, you would you would really like clean and tidy your house and also take care of the earth because earth is also your home. Be mindful of the environment. Only use what you need from the environment. Don't, don't waste water or food or anything on land. And once you've nurtured yourself, it's a good idea too to nurture others because it would make you feel good by nurturing others. 
So you could nurture others with touch by hugging them, um, um, by with food, by cooking for them. And also you could nurture others by teaching them, just taking care of others. Nurturing, you would really have in mind the image of that parent nurturing the child so everything can grow. Now, what are the three things you will implement in your life to harmonize your center? And again, earth season is now late summer when it's damp outside, but earth season would also be at the change of seasons between um, summer and autumn, autumn and winter, winter and spring, and spring and summer. So you would really have earth seasons uh, like four times a year. And now what, uh, while you are thinking or writing down the three things you will implement in your life to harmonize your earth, your center, um, I will look at the chat and answer to any questions. Uh, Shona, were the slides sent out? If not, can I get a copy of them? Shona, no, the slides were not sent out and uh, I will make them available. Um, I think normally I would have access to your email when you registered um, to uh, this webinar and I will send you a link to uh, download the slides. And also, if you feel that uh, this webinar is interesting, um, in my email, I will also send you a link for a, a replay um, in a few days or in a week or two. Depend uh, it would be more in two weeks because I have quite a lot of work right now. Um, so um, you can share it uh, with your family and friends. Now, we talked about Earth. Now, how, how about Earth imbalance and when would, add, would I, would I, would I uh, advise you to consult um, for traditional Chinese medicine acupuncture? For instance, somebody who has an healthy earth, earth, those people would be balanced. They would be hardworking, they would be practical, they're responsible, they're nurturing, they have a good entrance for everything, they have good appetite and good digestion, they have strong limbs, good muscles, they're orderly, careful, creative, and they have fertile imagination. But if somebody has an unbalanced earth, for instance, it would be people who are chronically tired, uh, who have physical and mental stagnation is the type of people who would be, who would feel stuck in their life, who would be depressed, who would worry, worry all the time. It's like having a hamster wheel in the head with, with being obsessed with one thought. They would have compulsion, they would have weak digestion, they would be bloated after eating or tired after eating, they would have poor appetite, they would have loose tools, um, they would have weight issues, which means either they're unable to lose weight, so they would be too fat, or either they're unable to gain weight, so they would be too thin. They would have a sallow complexion, which means like they would have like a yellowish complexion, they would look sick. They would, they would be sloppy in appearance, like for instance, um, it would be typically somebody who would be in the pajamas all day or in the like not nice tracksuit all day instead of getting you know themselves a pretty or handsome. They would live in disorder, the house would be a mess and they would accumulate, accumulate a lot of useless possessions. So if you have several of those uh, symptoms, it means that your earth might be not balanced. So might be a good idea to, um, to consult uh, for a consultation and have acupuncture. So how does a how is a traditional Chinese medicine acupuncture treatment? And I talk about traditional Chinese medicine acupuncture treatment, which is different from the type of needling you would get from your physio, or your chiro, or your naturopath, because those wouldn't be as holistic as the ones as the acupuncture given uh, in the traditional Chinese medicine setting. So how does how does that um, happen? So first, 
for those who have for those of you who have never experienced acupuncture before acupuncture is pain free it should be pain free first why because we use very very thin single use sterile needles and for visual for instance in that big needle here the needles that people use for um, um, blood tests or for vaccine in that needle you can put at least 10 acupuncture needles in it. That's how thin an acupuncture needle is. And it's virtually pain-free. You might feel a prick. It's like when a mosquito bites, but you shouldn't feel pain because usually when people have acupuncture, soon after the needles are in, people relax and fall asleep. If they had pain, they wouldn't be able to fall asleep. So. Just to reassure you, acupuncture is virtually pain-free. So how does, uh, what does a TCM treatment look like? First, uh, you would, your practitioner would go through your health history. For instance, me, I would ask questions about your body, your physical symptoms, you have pain anywhere else, you have digestive issues and so on. Um, I would ask about your emotions. Are you more angry? Are you more depressed? Are you happy? Are you more sad? Your lifestyle, what time you go to bed, what's your job, do you exercise, what type of exercise you do, your diet, what do you eat at what, and at what time. And I would look at your pulse and tone. So here, for instance, in a traditional Chinese medicine and TCM treatments, it's I think it's the only time when sticking out your tongue is actually polite. And the pulse we take in traditional Chinese medicine is quite different from the pulse um, a Western biomedical doctor would take. And then would come the treatment. Myself, I'm an acupuncturist, so I would insert needles in you and treat you like that. But I could also use moxibustions, which is burning mugwort near your skin, gua sha, scrapping your skin, cuppings. Um, I guess with the Olympics just finishing, some of you would have seen the cupping marks on these athletes. Uh, I would give you lifestyle and diet advice, maybe some Qigong exercise. I would, might do some Twina massage. And some practitioners, not me, because I haven't studied uh, Chinese herbs yet. It's in the plants, but not now. Um, some practitioners would also prescribe you Chinese herbs if you're interested in taking them. And the good thing when you have a Chinese herbs formula in traditional Chinese medicine is the formula is tailor-made exactly at for you right now for the condition you have. It's not a standardized drug, the same drug for everybody like in um, Western medicine in pharmaceuticals. And I know because I come from the pharmaceutical world. And once the needle are in, for instance, you will be able to relax and rest. And usually the needles are retained in your body for around 20 minutes, more or less, or sometimes more, it depends on your condition and your constitution. When to consult? First, each time you have discomfort, if you have pain in your body, you don't sleep well, you feel too sad for too long or too angry for too long, at the change of seasons, because it's nice to help you tune with the, with the seasons if you can't do it um, yourself. How often? It depends if your condition is acute and chronic. So depending on how uh, how your condition is, or treat needed, and for how long until the issue is resolved. So if it's acute, it could be just like a few days. And if it's more chronic, usually you would have weekly sessions for four to six weeks. And then we would reassess. And for some patients, um, they would need acupuncture for instance for like three to six months, for instance, for fertility patients. Now, thank you for your attention. Um, my name again is Aline Yon. I'm really, really, really sorry that I cannot start my video at all. And you can keep in touch with me uh, with we, by writing to me at this email address, alin at dameacupuncture.com. You can follow me at Dame Acupuncture on Facebook, Instagram, and also have my YouTube channel. And you look for Alin Yon, and you would have the replays of all the webinars I've done so far because I've done uh, several ones for each season. I will have another one, um, maybe the last one for the autumn next Monday, 13th of September. 
And if you want to see me and consult me for consultations, you can find me at the Toronto Integrative Medicine Center, the professional clinic of the Ontario College of Traditional Chinese Medicine um, in Spidana and Dadas, uh, third floor. Uh, you can call um, this number and you can also look uh, for um, their website. So at the Toronto Integrative Medicine Center, I'm there on Monday and at Yoga Mamas, it's more on the east side, you on King Queen Street East, you can find me over there on Tuesday and Saturdays. And now I'll uh, so that are questions and okay. So it's more questions uh, for Jessica and the Ontario College of Traditional Chinese Medicine for people who would be interested in studying um, traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture. So Jessica, now the floor is yours. Hello everyone. Sorry, I'm just getting this flipped around here. Um, so hello, I'm Jessica. I run admissions at OCTCM here. Um, so we're actually doing our fall intake coming up here. The deadline to apply is August 15th. If you're interested in starting school in the fall, I've just dropped my email down in the chat here. So if you are interested, um, admissions at OCTCM.com is how you can reach out to me. If you send me an email and let me know that you're interested, I can send you our information package, or you can alternatively um, send me a call or text to 416-527-4942. I'll put my number in the chat as well. But yeah, we have um, a lot of different programs that all start with the base two-year diploma of acupuncture. And then if you wanted, you can add on additional uh, year to learn herbs like Aileen was talking about. Um, so registered acupuncturists like her and I can go on to take this, or if you just are starting out fresh and want to learn the herbs, feel free to do that. Um, so I'll drop my information down there. And if you're interested, you have until August 15th to apply. Of course, you can apply after this, but we just have an additional late application fee. So back to you, Aileen. Thank you for letting me hop on. It was a great webinar. Thank you, Jessica. Um, I think I'll share my screen again if somebody didn't have, um, didn't see, um, didn't have time to um, write down the information. I would also encourage you to take a picture of that screen. And if you have any question, please um, feel free to ask your questions. Eileen, um, it's Melanie. Can I ask a question, please? Yes. <laughs> Um, I was just wondering, I was curious about this uh, season change. Mm -hmm. And I know for a lot of people, the season change from summer to fall brings about an onset of cold slash flu like uh, symptoms. Yeah. And particularly with the pandemic lurking in the background. I didn't know if you had any more specialized tips on trying to keep our immune system in tip top order to try to avoid A, the season change and uh, B, the pandemic uh symptoms oh it's a good idea i was actually thinking of it and i should have done it so i'm looking i would say massage stomach 36 to sandy so for those who don't know yet i'll look for a picture of it on the internet stomach 36 because my camera is broken today so you can't see it and okay, now I'm going to share my screen. I'm really, really sorry that my camera doesn't work. Um, so to Sandy, oh, it's the point, acupuncture point, stomach 36 is the earth point because each point has a quality from the five, like in each meridians, we have five points representing the five elements. So stomach, as we saw earlier, is an earth meridian. So when you stimulate the earth point of the earth meridian, it would nourish your earth. And when your earth is nourished, because you, you saw, maybe you remember earlier, earth would generate metal. Metal is the immune system. So by you would nourish your immune system by nourishing the earth. And a way to do that is massaging to Sanli or the point stomach 36. So maybe you would see it clearly here. You have 
a drawing of a knee of a person. So from the outside of the knee here, you have a small hole. And then from the small hole, you would put your hands, your, free, your forefinger here, and at the end of the forefinger, slightly outside of your shin bone, you would press on a point that is quite a bit sensitive, and that point would be Susan Lee. Uh, for people who have earth imbalance and uh, during late summer, I would really encourage you to massage that point at least two or three minutes every day. Um, for instance, I had a cancer patient who was really, really tired and who couldn't eat and so on. I told him to massage that point for two or three minutes every day, even longer if you want. And that's a, a way, for instance, to nurture your earth and um, be um, stronger because during this COVID, um, during COVID, it's, um, how can I say that? Our earth have been very weak. Does that answer your question, Melanie? Or does anyone has other question regarding that? Super helpful. Thanks, Eileen. And usually, you know, if people have like loose tools right now at the change of seasons, loose tool is like the spleen meridian, the earth meridian is a bit tired. And because you like loose tools, tools is also large intestines. So it's, you know, really between earth and large intestine is the metal element. So you're really between um, earth and metal at the change of season. Like if you see you have loose tool and your digestive system is not well, like, like stop, nourish your earth by stop eating raw food, cold food. I'll, I'll show the, the screen again. Uh, now I can't remember how am I going to do that, sorry. Share your screen. So you would avoid eating damp food. Nourish your earth by here. Avoiding, avoiding cold food, raw food, dairy, processed food, refined sugar, and alcohol. So right now, I know you would want to do it, but no beer, no salads, no ice cream, and no like no sugar, no sweets, and so on. And eat, instead eat whole grains, cooked food, warm food, and eat those, um, those earth food. Yeah, that would be my recommendations. Like follow the, follow the recommendations that uh, I'm giving here for the earth seasons. Go to bed and go to sleep with the sun. Eat the earth food, mild exercise. Get a hug, get a massage, um, nurture yourself by taking care of yourself, taking care of your house, tidy your house. And um, if uh, one and once you are nurtured yourself, once your own cup is full, nurture others. Yeah, so that would be my recommendation, um, Melanie. Awesome, thanks again. You're welcome. Um, does anybody has any other questions? And I think it's something I would send um, to everybody once uh, I have it because I actually made made um, made something before, and also um, view five because right now some people after eighteen months of pandemic. They would be worried because we don't know what's going on with the variants, blah, 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 blah. So on top of massaging below your knees, you would also massage between your eyebrows or the third eye. That point would also help calm your mind. You could do both. Hi, Eileen. I had a question. Hi, Samantha. Hi. Um, could you talk a bit more about the fasting in between seasons, like who you would 
recommend it for, who you wouldn't recommend it for, and, and how to go about it? Fasting between seasons. If you're in good health, you don't have any digestive issues, you're full of energy, you don't have any disease, you're not pregnant, you're not nursing, it could be a good idea to fast a little bit. Like for instance, you like for the next three days, what you could do for instance is only eat rice, lunch, dinner, and breakfast. And you only eat one, one single grain, only eat rice or only eat millet or only eat corn. Um, if you have any disease, if you have, I don't know, cancer, if you're tired, if, yeah, if you have any disease, if you have issues with your digestion, if you have food sensitivities, if you're bloated after eating, um, fasting might not be a good idea. But again, um, you need to consult a healthcare professional. They would, they would see exactly how you are. They would take into account um, your whole life and diet and health and constitution and they will be able to tell you. Does that answer your question, Samantha? Yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, it's um, 7.35 now. So if you don't have any more questions, thank you for um, being here tonight and if you have any other questions, you can write to me at adinadamacupuncture.com uh, or you can make an appointment with me. Uh, again, if I'm not available at any of those clinics, know that I have wonderful colleagues and Jessica who talked earlier is one of them. Um, so they will also be able to take care of you with their wonderful hands. And um, yeah, take care of yourself. And and uh, happy late summer. Bye, everybody. Good night. Thanks, Eileen. Bye. Good night, Melanie. Good night, everybody. Bye.